In this video, we again talk about partitioning matrices and vectors and how it relates to matrix vector multiplication. We're just going to dive straight into an example. Consider the given 5x5 five five matrix A and vectors X and Y, each of size 5. In this example, we partition the matrix into a 3x3 three three matrix of submatrices, delineated by the shown lines. Correspondingly, X and Y are subdivided into three subvectors. A partitioned matrix vector multiplication is now a matrix vector multiplication where we work with the submatrices and subvectors that result from the partitioning. Here we just show the symbols used to describe the submatrices and subvectors, A00, A01, etc. When you perform the partitioned matrix vector multiplication, you simply perform the matrix vector multiplication as if the symbols were elements in the matrix. This means that the first subvector of y, which we denote with y0, equals the dot product of the first row of symbols with the subvectors of x, a0, 0, x0, a0, 1, chi1, a0, 2, x2. Similarly, the other components of y are symbolically computed. Notice that the sizes of the different submatrices and subvectors have to match in a very specific way. The column size of A00 has to match the size of X0, otherwise A00 times X0 is not valid. We concisely indicate this by saying that the partitionings of A, X and Y have to be conformal. This simply means the sizes must be such that the operations make sense. Strictly speaking, I should prove to you that this is how a partitioned matrix vector multiplication works. Instead, we're going to illustrate it with an example. Here, at the top of the page, we again show the matrix A and vector X partitioned into submatrices and subvectors. On the left of each equal sign, we have the symbols, on the right, the concrete example. If we now look at to what the expression on the previous page evaluates, it is a matter of matching the symbols for the submatrices and subvectors to the values in the concrete example and substituting these into the expression. The expression of the, on the bottom is the result. In the next few slides, you may want to pay particular attention to the elements in red, which will contribute to the second element in Y. Going from the previous slide to this one, we repeat the last expression from the last slide at the top. At the bottom, we execute the various operations with the submatrices and subvectors. Moving forward, we again show the last expression from the last slide at the top, and below it we work out the final calculations, culminating in the result of multiplying A times X. If we then repeat below this result the matrices A and X with which we started, and we simply perform the dot products of the rows of A with the vectors X to form the different elements of Y, we see we get the same answer. Here we state the general principle. If you partition a matrix A and vectors X and Y conformally, then the partitioned matrix vector multiplication simply takes dot products of the rows of the partitioned matrix with the partitioned vector X to yield subvectors of vector Y. Let us compare and contrast with the matrix vector multiply with the matrix of scalars. Here is the result when you do it with scalars. Here is the result when you do it with submatrices and subvectors. The only thing you must keep in mind is that for a typical term aij times xj, the sizes must be such that this product makes sense, and you cannot commute. While alpha ij chi j is equal to chi j alpha ij for scalars, aij times xj is generally not equal to xj times aij. Indeed, the second expression may not even make sense. So, to summarize, performing a partitioned matrix times a partitioned vector works exactly the same way as a matrix vector multiplied with scalars, except that the scalars become submatrices, or symbols representing submatrices, and multiplication with the symbols or submatrices and vectors doesn't always commute. 